Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friend, Steve Porter. Hello. Denny Sunderly. Hi there. And back on the controls, our associate producer, Mr. Corey Fiescanaro. Hello. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Well, there it is. That's what we're reviewing. Now, I was not present for this review. Um, I had uh, an emergency with my pup um, and was not able to attend. Um, and that was a night that <sighs> emergency vets are no fun. Um, but fortunately, she's fine. She's fine. Uh, now, anyway. Um so these guys went ahead and did it. I have been dying to do Haleo. I have been hearing such amazing things about this place. I mean, really and truly, the kind of word of mouth this restaurant is getting. Um, and, you know, let's leave off to the side that the executive chef or the, the celebrity chef uh, for Haleo is Jose Andres. Um, and he has done some, he does some amazing humanitarian work. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, Google him. Uh, he really is, puts his money where his mouth is. Um, but uh, so let's talk about it then. Uh, tell me tell me about your experience. Denny, we'll start with you. Okay. So we went into this and we really, uh, we looked at the menu and we really wanted to make sure to get um, a nice cross section. The menu is quite extensive. And the way that the restaurant is based is that for in large portion, you would get small portions. So it would all be tapas. And so we had lots of tapas to be able to choose from. And um, there are a few entrees. And there's also three different tasting menus that you can do. One for $70, one for, I believe, 120 and then another one that also includes pairings. So we, we did not do that. We didn't do the tasting menus. And we put our noggins together and chose a bunch of tapas. Um, one thing that I suggested was... Now, let me just interrupt. Yes. Um, uh, the tasting menus, uh, was this all still tapas or were these larger portions? That's what it looked like to me. It's okay. a 13, each one offers 13 different courses. Oh, Lord. Yes, so you're going to be there for a little while. Um, less so with the $70 one than the $120 one, but 13 And do you know how much the pairing one was? The I third don't one? remember off the top of my I'm head. I'm sure if it was so, the second one was 120 yes. that one yes. must have been... I'll look it up when it's when it's not my turn, when I'm not yakking, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll look at it. Um, so the three of us uh, really kind of had a little powwow, and each one of us had dishes that we were passionate about, um, ones that we absolutely thought we, the table needed to try. Mm -hmm. So the one that I was the most passionate about was the paella. Um, Haleo features a kitchen that is dedicated solely to paella. So there's always this big... Um, pan, pa paella pan going, and every day you have a featured um, flavor. And so that day when we were there, there was um, chicken and mushroom paella, and then a mixto, which um, will feature um, like mussels. It was a mixture of mussels, sea, sea creatures in your paella. So what we, was that? It was, um, so the paella, they had either a mixto, which is going to be your seafood, your, your mixture. So you had mussels and other sorts of things going on uh -huh, in your paella. And then there was chicken and mushroom. So okay. We yeah. went for the chicken and the mushroom. A little less adventurous, but I think Although, that we... We were adventurous, Steve. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we were. We but um, this paella was fantastic. And I think we should go in the order that the food came to the table. Okay. I think that would be the best way yeah. to do this, if you guys are okay with that. I agree with that. Yeah. So so I said paella, that's coming. You gotta have you gotta order that forty five minutes in advance. All okay. right. So you gotta know you want it, put in your order and it'll eventually come. We started ordering things when we gave our order. Our server, Brad, who was wonderful he was awesome. yeah he was really good for, and yes. for lots of reasons which we'll explain yes yeah. we will get to those <laughs> reasons um but brad uh, asked if he could course our meal and we said absolutely and explain what that by means. all means so brad in his wisdom and knowledge of haleo and the way that a meal should go at haleo he brings things out at certain times as they believe they should arrive 
Okay. And so we put in our order, and the first thing came out when the first thing should. It didn't all kind of land on the table in one giant clump, yeah. which was nice, because then we could really savor the different um, textures and tastes that were coming to the table and we, at the time. Because we were then all experiencing everything together, mm -hmm. it was really nice for this review, because instead of everyone kind of trying different things all at once, that can get tricky when you're discussing. Yeah. When you're all trying the same thing, it's like, let's create a discussion here about what we're eating. And that is something that I imagine would be fun, not just for what we do, mm -hmm. but for just like if I were to come here with my family, yeah, just absolutely. to discuss what you're eating, absolutely. you don't really have those opportunities at any other, or a lot of the other restaurants at Walt Disney mm -hmm. World. So that was unique and really cool. Absolutely. And our meal was, our meal started at one, it ended at three. So having your meal coursed does take longer, but sure. it also allows you to really savor and enjoy what you have. But one so. of the things that, you know, one of the things we've, one of the, one of the main things we note with a, any dining review is, are we being rushed? Yeah. Because pacing. that's not unheard of mm -hmm. at Disney restaurants. They want to turn those tables over, especially when they're getting the kind of prices that a restaurant like this is getting. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to hear that yeah. they, 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 they pace it out like that and they'll do it for you, basically. Mm -hmm. They will. And I'm glad that you brought up the price because Haleo is not inexpensive. Yes. It, it is I'm looking not. at this menu that we have on the site yeah. and you're talking about, you know, Tapas, which is small plate, yeah. mm -hmm. is what that means. I'm seeing $19, $25, $32, $13, $31. Yeah. And I it's mean, two dining credits. And so it's a signature restaurant. Now, yeah, okay, now, okay, let me ask this question yeah. then. With the, um, with the dining plan, how does that work? Because yeah. that normally includes and appetizer, research. appetizer, <laughs> main course, dessert, yes. and soft drink. So how does that work at Haleo? So the tapas, one of the tapas essentially becomes your appetizer is what you can do. We sat there and researched it and actually went to the Diz boards because that was the most clarifying you know, statement that we could find on it because we thought the same thing. And essentially what the, what the, the Dizzers thought is this isn't really yeah. the best place to burn a couple of Dizzers. So wait, so plate. one, one tapas plate is yeah. considered an appetizer. Yeah. Another tapas plate is considered your main course. Right. You can do that yeah. or, or you could get a paella from yeah. what I understand as well and a dessert. And it's two table service credits. It's so signature. I just looking at this, I mean, so I, I like Haleo for what it is and I understand the hype behind it. I'll get into my thoughts as we yeah. go along this review. But I, I need to start out by saying, since we're on the topic now, this is probably the worst value if you were using a Disney dining plan. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, unless yeah. that paella was going to give you a massage and cook your breakfast yeah. in the morning. It was, no. yeah. I can't see it being worth that. It was fantastic. But So, Steve, you were the, the first thing to land on the table was inspired by you. Yes, I've so. had it in the past. I, can I have your help with the pronunciation? Fe absolutely. Anchoas don pocart. Yes, and it was basically anchovies canned anchovies that you put on top of bread with like a <laughs> tomato paste. Oh, Pete, yeah. I'm no. telling you. I, no, it sounds terrible. It really does. Okay, you lost me at anchovies. I know. You lost and, me and at anchovies. I know I probably lost most of you out there too, but and I am not an advocate or fan of anchovies normally, but it is in like a bed of olive oil and that's really all you taste there's not a strong yeah there's a slight fishy taste to it but yeah. barely this very very light this scared me a lot um in fact the first piece of bread i got because the bread that it served with i i can't say better things about this bread is delicious uh, and I've gotten that the first time I've ever been to Haleo, and I really enjoyed it. It was one of my favorite things. Um, but adding the anchovies to it, like I'm just like, I've never eaten anchovies before, and I could really go the rest of my life saying that and be totally fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I gave it a shot. Steve said, give it a shot. Uh, so I did. And, you know, you're right. It just it just added a little bit more of a, a, a salty, oily uh, taste to it, which, which is fine. My only complaint, though, is... The, to order the bread is twelve dollars. To order the bread with the anchovies, it's just one can of anchovies, is thirty. Those are that's good a jump. Yeah, that's a, a jump. jump in price. Fancy but I'm telling you, wait, 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 wait. Hold, yes. hold, hold. Order the bread was how much? Twelve. Twelve. Add a can of anchovies. Thirty. Thirty. 
So eighteen dollars for a can of anchovies. I also okay. There's context again. I go back to con- massage and breakfast yeah. in the morning. There's context to this. I've I've heard from people that I had this dish with the first time, and apparently in Spain and Portugal, canned foods are actually like seen as a good. It's like not the way that we see canned foods as like a okay. cheap alternative. It's seen as like. Wow, that's a very fancy a delicacy, a delicacy yeah. version mm-hmm. of the food because it's like preserving all the flavor. Okay. So that actually adds to them. That actually adds mm-hmm. value, uh, even though to uh, our American brains, it you think that must be cheap and disgusting, but they were. It, it was my first anchovy. I've seen my in laws get them on Caesar salads for lo these twenty six years, and <laughs> um, and I just kind of go okay to each his own, but. Um, I did it, and I was really proud. And so for everybody out there, I mean, Steve, you got a rep as mac and I, cheese, but dude, yeah. you were the one who brought up the no. anchovies. I, so. no, I'm not an adventurous eater. So yeah. if you're not an adventurous eater and you and someone else orders this, I'd still say just try a bite because you really will be surprised. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I agree with that for sure. Yep. So the next thing to land on the table were the croquetas de pollo, and that was something we kind of all – uh, chicken croquettes. On, yeah, chicken croquettes is what they are. So I think if you followed Haleo and its opening, um, this is what you've seen pictures of that comes out on the the dish that looks like the, the Cinderella's pillow that the glass slipper was presented on. Um, and there are five of these chicken croquettes. And if I remember correctly, this is something that um, – that the chef would get, that Jose would get at his grandmother's house right. when he was a kiddo. Mm-hmm. So his grandma would make him croquetas, and so he wanted to be able to have those here at Haleo. I can 100% see that because the first mm-hmm. time I, I bit into it, I was like, this is very kid-friendly because it just tastes like the like the meat in the stew that's in a chicken pot pie in like a little bite size, and you just kind of like... You know, almost like a jalapeno popper, but a, a chicken pie popper. Um, and it was so good. It was very, very yeah. good. Creamy inside, almost like a just a very finely shredded chicken salad, warm chicken salad inside of it. It was it was good. It sounds mm. it sounds weird. But no, it, it sounds good. It again, and that, that would be a good comfort food. We talked about comfort food at Chefs de France. And this, this was and, and just forgive me thing. for my confusion. Yeah. This was on the appetizer side. Yes, yeah, this was, is a tapas. Okay, it was uh, it was twelve dollars. And see, because the menu describes it as, as, uh, as what was the word you used? Traditional chicken fritters. Mm-hmm. Right. And that the, uh, it was like, like pieces of chicken inside there. But it, when my, my take on it is it was much more like it was pureed. It like was sh- it, very finely shredded. Yeah, yeah. But like the, the term shredded, I think of like the, um, like the, triangle dish appetizer dish at marrakesh where like it's like it's mm-hmm. like sh- like you could actually see the shredded pieces this was very like very very liquid and creamy um and the flavor i think was awesome but it was a texture that i wouldn't expect with meat i'll say that it's okay, a, it's okay. A, yeah Okay, so that was good. If you have a, a kid with you, that might be something that the kiddo would like eating. Mm-hmm. So that was that was something that we noted. So the next thing to land on the table was the patatas bravas. So patatas bravas. So just potatoes. If you've ever been, um, we have a great restaurant called the Columbia in Celebration yes, and in Tampa, do. the originals in Tampa. Um, and I know that's Colombian and this is Spanish, but um, but it's a potato that's been lightly fried in oil. And then this creamy aioli is drizzled over the top and it's got a spicy tomato sauce, bed of tomato sauce it's sitting on. You would have liked it. It had a kick. So that tomato sauce, um, it, it was Well, I like spicy. it with... I, I, I like things with a kick. I don't like it hot. It okay, wasn't. no, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't. You, you give it a little depth, yes. It wasn't bad. But you know, if I'm if I'm racing for you know, yeah. for a fire extinguisher to put my tongue out. No, uh, no. And these are the pota- the potatoes. My favorite dish of the Colombia is the salteado, the shrimp salteado. Same kind of preparation in the potato here with the patatas bravas. And this was fourteen dollars, I believe. Um, this, this was ten. Was, yeah, ten. it was only ten. Ten. Okay. Beautiful large chunks of potato. I will say, so the very first bite that I had was just a piece of, 
a potato without the aioli and the um tomato sauce the tomato sauce mm-hmm. that was underneath and it was just like okay this is just a potato what's the big deal right um and so i was that's weird but once i highly recommend that when you get the dish to kind of mix everything together like mm-hmm. you got a salad that you got to toss <laughs> because once you get all the flavors mixed in with the potato that's what makes it that comfort food that flavor and yeah. it really makes the dish because besides that you're just eating potato mm-hmm. and most of the most of the drizzle that like goes on top when they kind of put the aioli on top doesn't hit all no. it doesn't hit most of it it only yeah. really hits a couple clumps so if you don't mix it up then 70 percent of your dish is going to be kind of bland so make sure you mix it before you dive in and right. i i mean i felt the exact same way the potatoes were they were just basic potatoes is what i got from it but the sauces added that special flavor and that's really what i felt like the dish was trying to showcase mm-hmm. were the two different sauces that were on the plate yeah that's you know? i mean the, the potatoes were a vehicle to showcase like just like you said that aioli if you don't like garlic do not get this the um the aioli is incredibly garlicky it was good yeah but it really leads with the garlic so uh next thing to uh land on the <laughs> Land on the table was the carne asada con piquillos. This is where things start to get a little interesting. Yes. Okay. We kind of go a little off the track here. So, Steve, this is something that you really wanted to yeah, try. Yeah, I figured... Well, what is it, first of all? It's a flat iron steak, and it's, it's again, it's beautifully prepared. It's um, just, it, it's a little rectangle of little pieces of steak because it's a tapas Mm -hmm. and it's sliced and there's piquillo peppers that have been uh, roasted that are laid out on the side but it is 18 dollars, so for the very small portion size you know you're paying a lot for the amount that you're getting yeah our problem with it was it came out and he said i do like it medium rare and i do so i was like yeah and i should have really asked them because they were probably more like the medium and like well done folk over here and it came out blue yeah yeah that's not medium rare it was rare. almost gelatinous in the center. no oh like it was kind of cra- and you were the first one to notice it steve i want it however they want to prepare it for these dining reviews Give it to me the way that you w- think is best. Okay, right. except if that is going to put me in a hospital yes. or have me yeah. spending my night bent over a toilet bowl. Yes. So I, was... I said to our server, and he was really nice about it. I just said, hey, we ordered it medium rare. This is very, very rare. This is still alive. Yeah. Yes. And he said, oh, oh my gosh, I'll take it back. And he, they took it back. Another one came out. And again, it wasn't blue and it wasn't gelatinous, but it was certainly still not medium rare mm-hmm. it was like fairly rare still Ble- um, was there was it ble- bleeding um, the the center the way it was cooked it was i would say the outside was cooked yes. to our liking but that center of it was still like well, i mean that is going to be a medium rare but and i mean but like bl- almost was, still blue but, but again inside. when you're when when they're it's when they've been slight it, it depends. I mean, does it look like it was a full steak that was just sliced up, or was it just slices? It was the, It was a choice piece, is what it was. Like, you could okay. tell this was intentionally done. So if if that isn't your thing, I don't don't get it. You're not getting... Well, I just wonder if they're cooking the slices individually, or they're no. cooking the whole no. steak, no. and then... Okay, so they're cooking the whole yeah. steak. Yeah. and I, I never... mean, it's pretty easy to gauge, you know, if you know what you're doing cooking a steak... It's pretty easy to gauge, you know, rare, medium rare, medium, medium well, well done. Um, and I, if even if a little red is coming out, I'm normally, I normally don't care. It adds more flavor, I think. But this was just kind of beyond that. So I still had a piece just to see what it was. And it, the flavor was still great, but it was like... I was like, I don't want to get sick. So I didn't have much more than that. And unfortunately, I don't think we finished it even because yeah. no we was... didn't to take a look to take a look at this it's based it's 18 dollars, which seems on the cheap side for a steak but literally for a table of three of us that's just for like a few bites um and like they were saying the first steak that came out it, it looked like the steak like like you look at a piece of steak go- going at a grocery store it was that with a nice char mm-hmm. and then even the second one that came out it was still far too far too rare for my liking um, and, and like I've, 
I've always been the, the the psycho that orders well done steak. I mean, I do the same thing. And I'm not, I don't mean to call no you worries. that. It's just, it's just the no ma- ma- majority of people are like, "What are you doing with your steak?" And I understand that. And since I've branched out more, and I'm I'm, I'm at the medium the medium well uh, point now, but like like see, seeing a little bit of pink or a little bit of red, I'm fine with that. But like to ha- just have a a nice char on the side and then like just bloody red is just i can't do it it was yeah. i mean it was blue it. see my yeah. mom is my mom is one of those everything needs to be well done everything burgers anything that. it's got to mm-hmm. be cooked 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 um i prefer my steaks medium um but I, I don't like them well done and i don't like them rare um so i really don't want to see blood and i don't want to eat a brick of charcoal so you got to kind of thread that needle with those um not really hard to do, but no. um, but I do understand your point. Like I said, you know, and a lot of people are like that. They want they they want their beef well done. I thought it was kind of a shame too, because the 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 seasoning and, and the flavor I thought was good. It was just the yeah. kind of the rareness kind of scared me away. Yeah. And the manager brought the second one out and apologized because, mm-hmm. um, it, as you'll hear in just a minute, we also had another moment similar. So. Um, but the, he did apologize. He he described again what the dish was, but again it was it was still okay. a little less done, done than we wanted. So the next thing and the coup de gras um, that came out was the gambas a la Zahara. So shrimp, head on shrimp. Um, bless their little hearts. And they <laughs> came out and I heard the story. It, there's a presentation, okay? So a big dish is brought out, a saute pan, and it's on a cake um, a plate, is what it is. So it's elevated. And the lid is taken off, and there's quite a show. And I think you have footage of this. Yes. Yeah, yep, so. it'll be here right now. Okay, perfect. So um, Brad picked up the lid and he waves it magically, and the, you know, the smell comes out. It's lovely. It's really nice. Nice presentation, but it's head on shrimp, and they've been um, they've been prepared in olive oil and spices. And you have to take the shrimp and you know um, dispatch their heads de-head and it. yeah, dehead them, <laughs> behead them off with their heads, and then we gobbled them up. So we we each took two. Mm-hmm. Plate came to the table. Steve takes two. I take two. You take two. And we start eating them, and they're good. The flavor's really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, the shrimp uh, that we ate in this moment were done um, and <laughs> prepared fairly well, wouldn't you yeah. say? Yeah, Spoiler alert. They, they okay. were cooked. Yeah. I think I, I think they were well. I didn't get sick, yeah. so it was yeah. good. So Brad, our server, comes walking past the table, and he kind of does a drive-by. He stops, he lingers for a second, continues on. And within 30 seconds, he has turned around and come back to the table, and he says, I see a couple of undercooked shrimp. I see a couple of Okay, this shrimp. is a good server. And as he is saying that, my eyes are going to the pan, and I look, and there is a... that. If you've cooked if shrimp, you know that translucent gray blue that they have yeah. before they are fully cooked. And my eyes see what he is talking about. He scoops up the pan and leaves. And he says, I will bring you back another dish. And we said, okay, perfect. Then Brad comes back and um, takes my plate, my fork, my knife. All were on, my fork and my knife were lying on my plate. He takes all three and says, I'm going to bring out a fresh plate. Goes over to Fiasco, does the same with his. Now, Steve, you had your plate and then your fork and your knife sitting separately. He takes your plate first Mm -hmm. and then there's a beat and he takes your fork and your knife. And uh, now everything has, has been cleared of the table. He comes back, he starts to wipe down the table. And um, and I said to the guys, once Brad was away, I said, guys, he just took away everything that had touched undercooked shrimp. That's what he just did. He had to clear everything. Wow. And um, and that's that's what had to. And I'm glad Brad did it, guys. Yeah. Brad caught this. We didn't nah, catch it. Yeah. Our amazing server was the one who caught and, it. And for a little bit of context, the dish comes out on an elevated platform, yeah. and so you can't. I think the reason why we didn't notice right away is because like you kind of have to like look and the steam too. in to yeah. see. And so I would have just I easily if he didn't catch it would have taken the utensil that, you know, and and put it on my plate and if I didn't 
look quickly enough, I could have accidentally eaten yep. what was undercooked shrimp. So it was really good on him for noticing because I don't That's know. That's an we outstanding was, server. He was awesome. Yeah. That's but outstanding. He he got he cleared everything that could have a foodborne pathogen on the table. He cleared everything off, gave us all fresh utensils and plates. And 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 a sentence you don't want to hear. No. At a restaurant, foodborne <laughs> pathogen. No. Yeah. No. But he he did it in a lo- in a non scary like he did very it very professional. Oh, it was wonderful. He kind of he kind of swooped everything away before you could even have any concern about it. It was resolved. And yes. one other thing I'd like to mention is I don't think anybody could have caught it at first glance no. because once you open that that plate, it's just a bunch of steam and the oil is still bubbly. Mm-hmm. And another thing I'd like to mention is I was at Haleo on opening day. Uh, this dish has since changed. So this used to be in literally a pool of olive oil. Um, which it, it is not anymore. The, there's much less oil. And I, I will also say I preferred the original version. I thought there was a lot more flavor when I tasted it the first time. Um, but Brad yeah. gave you a reason why it had been changed. Do you remember what that reason was? It was just too oily or something about I, the flavors not working right? Yeah, I think I think it was uh, guest feedback. Okay. I think guest feedback... So that's, yeah. I mean, really impressive things are going on here. You know, meanwhile, we're Googling, okay, you know. Well, this, just, the- this, kind of, this, this, this kind of drives home the point that even when something, and, and look, things will happen. Yeah, it's, will. it's a restaurant, mistakes yeah. will happen. Absolutely. The importance of mm-hmm. the server, the importance of the recovery when something happens makes the difference mm-hmm. yep. between a great meal yep or a good meal and an awful experience that you'll never want to go back there again. Yeah. yeah. So this guy, sa- it sounds like this guy really saved the day. Yeah, he, he kind really of saved did. it twice between he, he did. the steak and the shrimp. Absolutely. Um, so, the, and, and none of us got sick. So just for the record, we did Everybody y'all? was fine. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. Was good. I didn't feel whiffy at all. And my husband was shocked that I didn't have a cow over the raw things coming to the table. And I really didn't because I think it was Brad. It was just Brad. And we knew we were going to be okay. Um, so uh, my husband loved the story when I recounted it later that evening. That's for sure. Um, the paella then arrived yeah. to, the ta- to the table. And it was, um, as Steve, you pointed out, it was kind of a rainy afternoon. Mm-hmm. This was the perfect dish for the rainy afternoon. It was afternoon. like the first cooler day in Orlando, yeah. too, and it was raining outside, and it was like the the flavor and the, the, the texture and everything about it was so comforting yeah. that, you know, it was just perfect in that, in that atmosphere. Um, and it, everything about it was just... It's like savory, and mm-hmm. it was almost like uh, th- it didn't. It wasn't a gravy, but it almost had like that that flavor in your mouth. When after you swallow, the flavor's still there for there's a little a while. There's a coating. Yeah, there's like mm-hmm. a coating in your mouth of the flavor that doesn't go away. Even after we left the restaurant, I think yes. it wasn't by the time I got to my car before the flavor went away. It it was. It's this rice dish that has been. If you don't know what paella is, you've got rice going on, and you've got olive oil, and and the chicken that they there were chunks of chicken in it that were just beautifully cooked and it prepared nicely, and mushrooms. And especially if you've mushrooms. ever, if you've ever cut up chicken and cooked it, you know how easy it is mm-hmm. to overcook Absolutely. that. Absolutely, overcook that to the point of distraction. of distraction. Um, so. Okay. Yeah, and this is twenty-one dollars, and when you compare the cost of twenty-one dollars against the steak, like the carne yeah. asada was what eighteen. 18. Yeah. So and the portion size, this was probably ten times the amount of food as the steak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is this is what I would say if you want to go here and not do the tapas option, just get a regular meal. This is what you got to get. Um, also, this entire theme of all the things we got, I. I for for flavor, generally good tack, price per value, bad tack. But this is uh this this is the, the best of both worlds where I would give it a, a definite definite thumbs up for flavor and it's also gonna get a definite thumbs up for the price per and value too. If you need yeah. convincing as you're walking into the restaurant on the left hand side that it's like an open kitchen and you can see the giant pans and pots that they're making it in and that's all you need to see and you'll be immediately convinced 
Yeah, it was major comfort food. This was the dish out of all of them that the three of us really devoured. We mm -hmm. really enjoyed and savored that. Um, and it's something that children will also like because they'll be able to know, okay, that's right. But not worth two and table service credits as your no, main no, course. No, no, no. No. Okay. But I would definitely go back um, with family and just get the paella. Get a bread and a paella and you're... You're good. It would honestly be a good place to, if you're on the dining plan and you're mm -hmm. maybe not on the deluxe dining plan, to save a dining credit one night and just spend your money out of pocket there and get the paella and then go to a fancier meal one of your other nights oh, yeah. because you paid out of, out of your pocket. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. That's just an, if you're considering doing this, but you're on the dining plan, that's an option. Yep. Just know you got to have 45 minutes. you got to wait for the paella to come to you. Right. And those those flavors will change each day. And okay. I, and I under I, I like I want to be like um, the I am going to be like the opposite voice here. Uh, basically, does it have this restaurant have some really unique flavors? Yes. But and, and could could I go here get that paella and get a good price per value? Yes. But if I was on the Disney dining plan, would I ever come here? No. Oh, definitely. If I was on, if I was here on vacation on a budget, would I ever come here? No. Even, even for the paella. Even for the paella, there's so many Ooh. other locations in Disney Springs I'd rather go to and spend. Oh, let's $20 wait till we get to our, okay. our, our, our right, impressions. Fiasco. Okay. You're thrown down here. So the next, we're now on to desserts. And the first dessert to arrive sounded like such a good thing. But when it came, it was very womp womp. Um, <laughs> so it was the Jalados y Sorbetos. And that was uh, Fiasco's Sorbet. Yeah, so that was a scoop of, uh, was it strawberry? Not scoops, certainly a not scoops. Scoop. It, it was a bite. And it, was a, it was a bite of, uh, it was a bite of raspberry sorbet. And it was literally just a bite. Um, it was decent, and it was nine dollars, and it was a bite. That's insane. It, it yeah. was such a small scoop. It was about a it half dollar. <laughs> yeah, just in size. Yeah, it was uh, really. It sad. It was pretty sad. So that's about all I got to say about this. The bite. Hashtag <laughs> sad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next one that came. Um, well, the two that came was my pan, pan con chocolate, um, which was a chocolate custard um, with a caramelized bread, olive oil, and brioche ice cream. If you've never had brioche ice cream, good heavens, you need to go to Haleo and ask for the brioche ice cream and gobble it down. It was amazing. And I thought, what, bread flavored ice cream? No, it was warm and custardy and comforting. And it was just something very, very different than I have had. Um, I, I enjoyed it. The caramelized bread crisp was really a neat thing to see, not something you're going to see anywhere else. And it was sweet and it was unique. So I really enjoyed it. And then, Steve, you got... It was like a grapefruit uh, dessert with olive oil ice cream on top. So it was essentially olive oil ice cream, then a layer of like grapefruit icy, and then yeah. with uh, the bottom layer of just chunks of, of grapefruit. And this, Brad recommended to get a scoop kind of of each of the different textures. And that was, I think, a decent recommendation if you love grapefruit. But it's a very strong grapefruit punch. Yeah. It's um, in your I, face. I prefer, <clears throat> actually, that the, the as odd as it sounds, the olive oil ice cream by itself Super was unique. really unique and really, really good. It reminded me of... Um, you were saying uh, in California. Yeah. Um, salt, salt and straw. straw. Yeah. Just kind of like those weird flavors of ice cream that you wouldn't expect to be good, but it was so delicious. And while the, the combination of flavors was decent, I actually think that just eating the ice cream by itself was much better because the yeah. grapefruit flavor just kind of takes over everything. Yeah. Okay. So how much was the final the final tally here? So it, uh, it was... A hundred and ninety dollars, but you could do tables in Wonderland. So with tables in Wonderland, it breaks it broke it down to about one sixty eight. Um, okay, so you're talking about, uh, and there were three of you. Yes, right. So you're still talking, even with tables in Wonderland. This is a fifty five dollar. This is not an inexpensive experience right. mm -hmm. but it is an experience you're not going to breeze in and breeze out you're going to be there for a little while if you do it the way that they intend for you to do it and i will also say 
and you noted earlier, some of the options that we made made this a more expensive meal. Like Absolutely. my insistence that we get the anchovies because I wanted everyone to try them was an extra $18 or whatever it was. And, you know, we all got dessert. We all got different things. I think if we had, if you came and everyone got the paella and Does it, one tapas to share, uh-huh. you could make this a much cheaper meal. Not saying that that, make, that means that this is a cheap <clears throat> restaurant, but I'm just saying there are certain ways that you can make it cheaper. Does it feel... As though, does it feel as though you were nickel and dimed for your meal? When you talk about eighteen dollars being added on for anchovies, and you know, uh, you know, nine dollars for what amounted to a spoonful of sorbet, um, that was atypical. I feel like his sorbet was just a little. I think it 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 didn't seem like. What what thing is not like the others? That's yeah. what it felt like. like. All okay. of our desserts came yeah. out, and we were like, "We get this, and you get that." Yeah, it was kind of because ours a, were good. Yeah. See, for for me, looking at everything as a whole, I feel like if you go into this and you don't you don't consider a budget and you don't consider your your money, uh, you're probably not going to be bothered. But the moment you start to think, "This is what I paid thirty dollars for," "This is what I paid." Eighteen dollars for I can't help but get bothered and to be here on vacation with a budget and Doing one thing means I can't do another thing mm-hmm. it, it bothered that's it would fair. bother me. That's yeah, that's hundred percent fair, fair. Mm-hmm. All right, Absolutely. so let's get to ratings scale of one to ten Denny. Oh my goodness um, I want to give it an eight and a half. It was really nice. I loved Brad I loved the fact that he was so on top of his game and um, he really took a lot of attention and care with us. Um, the restaurant was not crowded. Again, we were there at one o'clock in the afternoon, and um, and it was just uh, it was a lovely experience. And that paella just that that for me was my favorite. Steve, uh, I'm gonna say oh this is hard. I would I would give it a higher score, but I'm gonna say eight point five. The only thing that is holding me back from maybe a nine is price and despite Brad fix every every fixing everything right away it was just kind of a little of a hiccup that the food came out the way it did for the shrimp and the yep. steak okay fiasco yeah so um Brad Brad gets a 10 service gets a 10 yes i agree but yeah. price per value like is like a 4 and the fact that the price per value is so rough and you're just paying for this flavor experience and then the kitchen still messes up the two biggest items that hurts too um so I, I need to give it a, a, set, a generous seven, tilting more back towards like a six and a half. Ooh, wow. 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 Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. Two eight and a halfs and a six and a half seven from Fiasco for Haleo at Disney Springs. That will do it for this episode of the Disney Dining Show. We hope you enjoyed it. We will see you again next week.